So hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. So in today's episode, we decided to not use any footage because my guest here want to keep his anonymity. Or how do you pronounce it? Anonymity. Anonymity. <laughs> anonymity. Yes, exactly. So we respect that over here, of course. Um, so in today's episode, we are about to talk about disabilities. Because um, both my guest and me, myself, have what society would consider some kind of disability. Like we go under that spectrum. And we are basically here to just share our stories and try to reach out to people that may go through the same thing or mostly give like a heads up to people that don't have disability or consider themselves disabled in any shape or form like how they can better be um how do you say alliérade in english have a better alliance alliance thank you have a better alliance okay so that's the program for today. So short and sweet. Uh, my guest name is Dijon. I always keep pronouncing it wrong, but it's correct, right? No J. No J. Dion. Dion. Okay. So my guest name is Dion. Uh, this is a former classmate of mine. We went to nursing school together back in, was it 2017, 18 sometime? Something like that. And yeah, 17, yes, we started 17. Uh, both Dion and I changed major and subjects and school and all of this stuff. So Dion will explain a little bit more about that. Uh, the educational background and all of this stuff is very inspirational. Let me just tell you that, very inspirational. Um, so yeah, with no further ado, Dion. Um, Dion, here. Um, my name. My name is Dion Ije. I was born here, in Sweden, in, uh, Stockholm, Sweden, and uh, I went to English uh, primary school, but. Um, Preschool was in Swedish, and then uh, secondary and high school was in English, all in Stockholm. And um, yeah, um, it was hard for me because in primary school, did teacher didn't know what was wrong with me. <laughs> I wasn't learning like the others were learning. But it took to me graduating from high school to learn that I have uh, uh, dyslexia. But it was kind of well, too late to be benefit from it in high school. So, so uh, I used, so I, uh, I went on to university and I uh, started with uh, Gen gender studies. I did one course, but it didn't work out for me, so I switched to um, what was it? Um, primary uh, teaching program with majoring in uh, um, what's it? Um, it's called uh, free teach hem. So like. Um, I'm the teacher, like the program is the teacher that is usually taking care of the after school activities. So you could say primary teacher measuring in after school activities. That shit didn't work. <laughs> it was really hard because of the uh, dyslexia and I was, why well, not was, I'm still an introvert person so I don't like to talk so much I don't like to talk out of without having a reason so people don't like that that much <laughs> people that pisses people off a it lot does? yeah it does oh god so I failed a lot of my course because I wasn't so 
talkative, not extrovert. So I dropped out. Then I worked for a while. Then was I went back to no went back, but I started folk hug school to hire my grades. So I managed to do that. Got three point five. That was the the highest is four. So well, it was enough to get into what I want to get in. So I got into nursing program with you. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I uh, did that for a while. Everything was going okay until it got to um, the autonomy part. Now everything went to shit again. So uh, I didn't pass. Then after that, I didn't pass more tests, more tests. So I, I said, maybe I try another school that is more closer to where I live. So I, I applied for Karolinska. And the same problem happened again. The autonomy part was hard. So after that, I started to fail, to fail. So, so I, I decided to drop out of that and change to uh, uh, career counseling because um, it had a lot of computer uh, subjects in it to guide and to use the computer to find information. So I did that for three years and it went well. I, uh, I passed, I graduated. Then uh, I, after that, I applied for a master's in information system. So, uh, and for that, you just needed a degree in something. And career counseling was my degree. So I got into that, did that for one year. Now I have a master's in information system by waiting for my uh, like degree certificate to like certify that I, I'm done. Awesome. Yes, so here you have somebody that can explain basically a whole life in less than two minutes, <laughs> okay? Very impressive, I may say, very impressive. So uh, I think some of the listeners may be interested in where you come from. We missed that part. Like, where are your origins? Okay. Um, Like I said, I was born here in Stockholm. But my parents are from Nigeria. Are you Yoruba or the other one? (laughs) Um, There's two types of Igbo. There's Delta Igbo and Igbo. Damn. I am Delta. Delta, that sounds fancy. Delta, you know, like, what is the difference? Um, How can I say it? Um, The languages, do you understand each other? The dialect, okay. So we understand. Sometimes a little hard, but we still get the context. I like the name Delta. Mm. It feels, you know, like Sigma, Delta, some kind of sorority. You know Delta State in Nigeria. No, I don't know. Yeah, that's a state called Delta State. Oh, so it's from there. Okay, mm. I get it. That and makes the rest sense. The is Igbo. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. Mm. Okay, so you mentioned that you had um, uh, dyslexia. Yeah. Yes, and that that has been, um, how do you say that that has been challenging for you yeah. when it comes to the studies. Mm. But has it been challenging when it comes to the so-called regular life as well? You know, like the social life. Um, I guess so, yeah. I don't know. Sometimes it feels like it helped make me introvert because I'm so... I'm so... Um, I don't know, like, when I was young, I was so, I, I couldn't, I had trouble explaining what I wanted to do because of the dyslexia. Mm. So I, I, that kind of made me like to be with, to myself, not be with people. So you became a little bit more, I get what you mean. Mm. I really to myself. Get, yeah. 
like before when I was little, well, I was bullied a little mm. before I started the English preschool. I went to a Swedish one. Mm-hmm. And there was always some, that bitch, gosh, she was a bitch. <laughs> uh, Sahara. Hmm? She was a fucking bitch. Why is she, it always like that? You can remember their names. Yeah. Like, it would go to she the, was a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to forget huh? a cold-hearted bitch, <laughs> you know? So, yeah, she huh? kept pinching me all the time. And this was in preschool? Yeah. Yeah, do you see? So this is, to anybody listening out there, never bully anybody because this stuff will hang with you like forever ever like this would yeah yeah so that didn't help with my you know nervousness and that helped make me more introvert more to myself Mm. so i don't have to talk to people you were basically scared of being judged almost like it feels like say that yeah and to from judge to just leave me the fuck alone kind of vibes mm-hmm. started to like I got okay with being alone you um, even I craved it sometimes you did like just yeah, leave you, me alone because you have like I think I spoke about this a long time ago mm-hmm. that there are two different types there are more but there are two significant different types of loneliness mm-hmm. like one that you choose mm-hmm. and the other one that is forced upon you like you do want to hang out with people but you just can't because of whatever reason Mm. you know but it feels like you eventually you were longing for this yeah like be to just just to be left alone but it's not like i just it's not like in a bad way Mm. i just want to be alone it's easier you don't have to Mm. mask or whatever these people yeah call it Uh, Mm. uh Another thing, I don't know if you mentioned this, but um, what do you call the other condition that you have? Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't have an arm. Um, my uh, right arm, it started with, I had an uh, advert. I was, uh, my mother was kind of overweight. So she had, um, what they call this thing? Uh, like pregnant people usually have it sometimes, like, diabetes but it's only it happens when you're pregnant that she Mm. had okay so i was i think i don't know i'm not 100 percent, but i was a big baby Mm -hmm. a little too big so when i was being born they pulled my right arm Mm -hmm. out of the socket and they didn't it could I, i guess they couldn't pop it back in so the nerve, I got nerve damage then. So basically the doctors and nurses, they did the mistakes that led to that you left, that you lost your arm. Yeah. Or some of your arm. Yeah. Hmm. Well, like now I'm an amputee, but before I had an arm that didn't work. Mm-hmm. So it, it was an arm, but... It, my arm looked like a five-year-old while, while I'm not a five-year-old. I get it. You understand? Like, that, that kind of arm. Like it developed later than the rest of the body almost? or Slowly. Mm. Very slowly until it stopped growing. Okay. Wow. Like that. Were you angry at any point? Like at the doctors or... You know, did you get some kind of reparation or, you know, I mean, like... I got, you know, scarred this one. Yeah, you got reparation, know. okay. Mm. And an apology. <laughs> that would be nice. I don't know. No, I don't know. I don't know. Just, I got money. That's nice. <laughs> uh, that's nice. I can cry and wipe my tears with the dollar bills. Yeah, something like, like that. So, <laughs> in a way, yeah, I got my little sorry yeah. and money. So, yeah. Man, you know? Mm. So you can say that this is not something that you were, like, genetically born with. and Like, this was something that was caused to you. Yeah. Yeah. So, technically, it looked like they should have done a cesarean. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I think, what if I lost my mother because of it? So, so I'm okay with it happening the way it did. They didn't know what the fuck they were doing. Oh, gosh. 
Maybe huh? they could have killed her. I don't know. So I'm okay with no arm. That works. Okay. <laughs> no, I mean, as long as you're happy, you know, like. Yeah. I don't, I not say happy. I'm okay. You okay with it? Yeah. Uh, you know. Happy is I have an arm that works, but mm. okay is enough. But I like this truthful side because let me just flink in that when it comes to disabilities, it almost feels like some people, oftentimes people that are not dis disabled in any shape or form, uh, they are so used to these success stories, you know, that somebody's missing arms and legs and all of a sudden they can sprint, they can run fast or they can swim fast. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yeah. And I feel like like if you are disabled and you see all of this, you almost feel inadequate then. You feel like, ah, oh, so me just doing this regular stuff is not enough. I need to be extraordinary for this. Uh -huh. Do you understand? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's kind of sad, you know, like, ah. Mm. Oh. I don't know, for me, I just, I don't know, I just. <laughs> Give a fuck. <laughs> it's good. I don't care that much. Okay, so we went a little bit off track here, but mm -hmm. we have some questions here that we're going to ask Dion. Uh, the first one, I think you already covered it. Uh, you basically mentioned the arm. Like, what do you call that... Um, how do you say... Uh, the first, um, the uh, first arm injury was... Um, Brixis, plexus, nerve damage. Mm -hmm. uh, then the damage happened in the shoulder. Mm -hmm. So then all the arm doesn't work after but that. Did it affect any other body part or anything like that? Sometimes or? they say it, it might have caused my dyslexia, mm -hmm. but it depends on which uh, speech therapist I go to. One yeah. says yes, one says no. So I don't fucking know. <laughs> I'm telling you. huh? So something like that. Wow. Yeah. Um, and the challenges. Have we been speaking about the challenges that comes with these so-called disabilities? Like in your everyday life. Like you said a little bit. You mentioned a little bit with school. Like mm -hmm. that that was a challenge. Mm -hmm. And social interaction. That yeah. it left you a little bit introverted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, well, not little completely but completely yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're like i went full on yeah. full-blown introvert but embraced it yeah it's not a bad thing so. it's not a bad thing you know don't you i don't know if it would have been so if i didn't have the injury That's so you, the basically you're saying that your natural personality is not introverted per se no like this I'm is saying i don't know you don't know. Yeah. You don't know. Okay. But this happened, so it, this is the way it is. Yeah. But what... What, what if it, it didn't? Yeah. Uh, how would you have been then? Yeah. It's true. It's a very philosophical question. Mm. Okay. So what do you wish that more people knew about your disabilities? Like the two different... Mm. Have you met a lot of ignorance, a lot of questions? Uh, perceptions a lot of, of dyslexia. Um, this, before, when I said I had dyslexia, they usually say, does the words dance on the paper? That's what they would say. What the and word? I say, that it, if it did that, I would be losing my fucking mind. Mm. But, you know, they were seven when they asked. Oh, this was children. Yeah. <laughs> children can be cruel. Like, I would say it was mean, but they just what they know. That is what they know. Yeah. So that's what they heard. Hmm. Yeah. So what would you wish that people... Oh, like, yeah, and they, the arm, the yeah. nerve damage yeah. part was... Well, everything is from childhood. That's yeah. all I, well, remember. And they usually ask when you're little. So... One was, what happened to your arm? Mm -hmm. Then sometimes I ask, why do you want to know? Because I want to know. You know, they keep asking, keep being a dick. Mm -hmm. so, like they need to know, like they're going to fix it or do something. They're seven, seriously. <laughs> okay, so I get it. But like a grown person, because you are 32 now, yeah. right? 
have you experienced from grown folks, you know, like teachers, co-workers, any kind of discrimination or just notice that they are treating you different or anything like that? Well, well, when I was like in, but not grown, I, everything is when I was little. Mm. Like when I was in. Doggies. You avoid people right now. So yeah, you yeah. like. <laughs> so when I was in preschool, and in old pictures, I see that I'm always with one blonde chick. Mm. I'm always on her lap. So I asked my parents and they said that was the person who took care of you because you couldn't wear your clothes. Mm. So that's why she's everywhere you are in the picture. Some kind of personal assistant. Yeah. Also. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that. Mm. So. Uh, that's a kind of privilege in an unprivileged situation. Yeah. Mm. But I didn't get it. So I needed a person to wear my clothes. That's all. Just clothes, whatever. It is what it is. Then, then uh, when I'm adult, it's more understanding from, ad uh, well, other adults. Like uh, when I started high school, so a teacher noticed my arm. This was before the amputation. And she showed me that she had no fingers. Oh. So it was more like to you, relate. You could bond with her yeah. on that. But that's good. Yeah. That's good. So no asking of what's wrong with you. Mm. Thing. I need to share one story. And this was back in... This was a long time ago. This was the first university that I went to. I had one of my classmates. She was in her... Uh, she was a middle-aged lady sitting in a wheelchair. She didn't have any arms or any legs. It was basically just the middle part that existed. Uh, or and that quadriplegic or something. Is that it's, the name? It, it, like it has no fo all the four limbs or nothing. No, exactly. No mm. limbs. Mm. Literally just the body, you know, mm. and the face. Yeah. And this lady was... She was so sweet, so intelligent and all of this. And I remember like the first introduction, the first day, mm -hmm. you know, when you talk yeah. about yourself, your name, why mm -hmm. you choose these studies. Mm -hmm. Everybody was very surface level mm -hmm. with the information. Mm -hmm. And when we came to her, the first thing she said was like, all of you probably already noticed that I don't have any arms and legs. So I'm just going to address the elephant in the room mm -hmm. and tell you guys that I'm born like this and the condition is this and that. And she basically went through her condition. Mm -hmm. And I felt so bad for her. I remember like looking at her and thinking, it's a lot of people here that are sitting with all kinds of disability, mm -hmm. maybe invincible disabilities, mm -hmm. but none of them are in that position that they, they are forced to almost have to, mm -hmm. do you understand, out mm -hmm. themselves like that. And I was like, imagine how many times, because like I said, she was in her mid forties. So mm -hmm. Imagine how many times she have been, every new job, every new city, every new interaction, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, do people always need to know? Mm -hmm. You know, can't you just see that somebody's different and you just accept that mm -hmm. as it is? Like, do you have to, what are you gonna do with that information? You know? Mm -hmm. It's just, it could be the uh, the annoying thing that always happens. Do you know what it is? The one. You know? Do you know? Tell me. The staring. Ah. They stare without blinking. <laughs> they are like zombies. What the <laughs> fuck? Like, mm. blink, mm. you know? Mm. That, that's why. That might be why she mm. usually needs to explain. This is what I was thinking too, that she has probably gone through a lot of misconceptions, mm. misunderstandings, and this is her way of just being like, let me just address the elephant in the room. Yeah. But it's like, oh. Because after that, they won't stare because they kind of know what she said about this. So it's kind of hard to start staring. But it's when so you know unfair. If, yeah, but well, the staring kind of not, is not present. It's not pleasant at all. I mean, no, but it's, it's not present. It's not present, yeah. meaning? It doesn't happen. It doesn't exist then. Because mm -hmm. mm. they know what she said about it. Oh, God. But because before, it's more they wonder. 
they will want them forever if they don't. Yeah. Oh, the cu don't curiosity kill the cat. Huh? Yeah, something. Like Sometimes, that. huh? Uh, let me see. Let me see. Yes. Do you remember the hypothetical question? This was last summer. We were on a picnic, I think, and we were just talking out loud. Because let me just share. My so-called disability is uh, what you would consider um, non, like uh, it's not visible, basically. Mm -hmm. So you move through life and by the first glance when people see you, you look so-called normal, whatever normal means. But as soon as they start interacting with you, they start to notice like, the body language, the eye contact, the, you know, the stressful everything. Mm -hmm. So basically, I'm diagnosed with something called ADHD. And yeah, that is attention disorder or something. Like, yeah, I, my brain is all over the place at the attention, same time. Uh, hi, the hyper. Hyper the something. Hyper one. Because mm. there's, there's, there's another one that's not hyper. ADD yeah. you're thinking about the ADD it's so funny because like oh like now as a grown-up some people they are like are you sure you have ADHD because you can sit in the same spot for hours without doing anything it feels like you're more ADD and I'm like you know what I don't care put whatever label you wanna mm -hmm. you know I take it with a inch of salt or pinch of salt but anyhow so that summer, last summer, we were just, we were just like hypothetically talking, me and Dion. And I asked, what did I ask? I was like, if you had to choose before, between having a visible disability where you are missing like an arm, a leg or blind or something like that, where everybody else could see like, okay, this person needs some kind of extra assistant in some department, or if you would have the more, uh, so-called invincible where it's like on the spectrum maybe some kind of ADHD, Asperger's autism or just you know like dyslexia like something like that you know and would you want to share what you answered or do you remember even because this was like a remember. you don't remember I'm not dyslexia at all. <laughs> okay so basically which one would you have chosen to have Mm. Um, the physical part the um, well I guess the one I have you would have chosen that yeah but natural like born like that okay so not because some... there's different types of arm stems mm. or what is it uh, uh, arm amputation I have I still have nerve damage mm-hmm in my shoulder i can't really move my full arm that but right. uh, people that are born mm. without an arm they can they have they still have feeling have full motion okay i can't still so. Hmm. so but i think you answered different last time we spoke <laughs> well <laughs> but I you remember. yeah you we we evolve <laughs> so basically but you gave an answer. That was a good answer. Mm -hmm. So basically, like, where, what we were talking about then was that we were considering how society views dis disabilities. Mm -hmm. And I think both you and I said that an invincible disability would at least, like, uh, open the door for you. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you meet people mm -hmm. and they won't be so fast to put you in a box or you know like they would at least like so-called invite you to the table or whatever you would call it you know but the thing also is this the arm amputation that one that oh you have still full function of your shoulder mm -hmm. you can wear a pro, pro arm prosthetics yeah and you wouldn't know i don't have an arm if it's the if protest it works, is very good uh, if it works yeah but that's the thing here. It depends on which kind of amputation you have. You if see? you have full, like you don't have the full arm, mm. then you have the bionic, the one with all the fingers work. Mm -hmm. Was but, it that one you showed me yeah. where it can yeah, grab stuff? Yeah, so it looks like a full arm, okay. like a real arm. 
for me, mm. for some reason, they don't think I should have one. Why? I don't know. Hmm. That I'm not, like, I have to be like a, a surgeon who uses all fingers to operate, so therefore they consider it justified to spend money mm -hmm. to create that kind of bionic arm. Okay, so that's if the, you had like if you had a legit reason, yeah, like to them. Uh, let's say you and I continued nursing school, mm. you would actually need it then. Yeah, so you could show them yeah. I have my degree, and to give people shots and vaccinations and stuff, I need to have a better grip. But mm. they would accept it then. Yeah, man. You, here you have to explain, explain, and after you're done explaining, explain again mm. before they consider trying to give it to you but if you will buy it yourself then without oh, any it, like we're talking like a car yeah oh crap that's a lot huh? mm. especially if it's like a mistake that the doctors the 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 hospital did yeah then is the bill should go to them right yeah. like that is the decent thing to do yeah well i'm grateful i'm I'm born in Sweden, North America, where everything is, you pay. Yeah, it. oh God. Self-funded. Imagine that. Uh, but maybe I would have gotten the arm I wanted, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, United States. Uh, mm -hmm. Have you heard about the people having diabetes and they had to fly to Canada to buy the medication there? Because it was either unavailable in the United States or it was too expensive. Something mm -hmm. like that. That's what I mean. The hill? And I have this um, diabetes. You too. have? Oh. I have it too. Also that? Yeah. Okay. Type 2. When did you know that you had that? Um, during nursing school. During nursing school? In the end there. Okay. But I found out after I amputated my arm. Oh yeah, some people think it's, if they don't know me, they think it. I don't have an R because of the diabetes. Oh. Because that's a, another, like, negative... Or a side effect. Side eh? effect yeah. of uh, diabetes. Okay. But they usually lose an arm, not an... I lose a leg, not an arm. Hmm. But whatever. Is it because of the blood something doesn't... Yeah. Mean something like that? Okay. Man, it's not easy, huh? But you, you seem grateful. You seem like, do you understand? Like you could have been. I seem okay. Yeah, do you understand? Do you I understand? Say grateful, but okay with what it is. Mm. I wouldn't say grateful. You wouldn't say grateful. No, no. More okay. More. This okay. is what it is. You basically adapt to it. Eh? Mm. Okay. Yeah. More mm -hmm. like that. Yep. I'm not like on the floor. Oh, I'm breaking. Oh, I'm so happy. Uh, I'm not fucking happy. But I'm okay with it. <laughs> I think this is the side that people need to see more of. Mm. This is the example that I was saying that as soon as you are disabled somehow, the people that are not disabled, they feel like you should be this super disabled person almost, mm -hmm. you know, always happy, always, nothing is wrong, you can do everything, look at this, do you understand? Mm -hmm. Like, almost like an inspirational, motivational... Because it's because normal people belittle people with disability. Oh, you can't do that, oh, I feel sorry for you, that kind of bullshit. Then you got to overdo everything. So to prove that you can do everything everybody that is able can do. And that's the thing that you shouldn't have to. Just by you existing. Because if you say, we say normal, but we should probably use like another word. Uh, but Abled. I can't. Huh? Abled. Thank you. Yes. I heard it. That's a good one. So let's say abled people, mm -hmm. like a lot of so-called abled people, they, they just exist sometimes. Mm -hmm. they don't, they're not brilliant in any department in life. Mm -hmm. And nobody's looking at them any type of way like mm -hmm. you're not doing more. Yeah. 
like maybe within the family like you will have like the mm -hmm. family members relatives be like oh you should pursue this you should do that but mm -hmm. overall in society i feel like you're right there's a lot of pressure on the so-called un what do you call it? not able then disabled oh. mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. i just lost my brain cells mm -hmm. You know, like they can't, disabled people cannot just exist as they are. No. You know? It's always this comparison, like, oh, mm -hmm. okay. But this one is in a wheelchair and they can swim. Mm -hmm. At least you have two legs. Mm -hmm. You know? And it's like, okay, but that's that person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's crazy, right? Mm -hmm. And no. now there's a para, Paralympics for, to show, hey, I'm disabled, but I can do this. No. Whatever. <laughs> it's like no, but it, I mean, for these people that are doing it, mm. kudos to them. Mm. Awesome. Do you understand? Mm. Like, uh, but I don't think that you should view everybody else in the same way and be like, just because that person is doing it, mm. why aren't you? You know? Because then you can shift that to this person and be like, okay, but you are so called able. Uh, why don't you pursue that? Why don't you fly to the moon? Why don't you... Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So, let people just be who they are and, you know, have their limits, yep. basically. Uh, but I like what you were talking about, that people look down sometimes on disabled people. So, this is basically... Obelito. Obelito, yeah. This is basically what we were trying to come to in this so-called little podcast session. There was one example. There was. Maybe she wasn't belittling me, but it came from, oh, I'm so sorry for you, vibe. What did she do or say? Like, this was before I got my uh, arm prosthesis. Mm -hmm. So I didn't. I walked around without, you know, an natural. Arm. Yeah. yeah. So you could see there's no arm there. Mm -hmm. So when I was buying something, so I used my able arm mm -hmm. to do everything. All of a sudden, everybody needed, had the feeling to help me. Mm -hmm. Even an old chick mm -hmm. stood up for in on in the bus mm -hmm. to offer me a seat. Bitch, you are old. You need to sit down. <laughs> no, thank you. Okay. So you took it. You you didn't you didn't take that well. Huh? No. Okay. Bitch, you are old. Try not to die. Old. Are you giving but me that, that's seat? somebody could say that's aging. Uh, how do you say discriminative to He's age? Had a cane, motherfucker. <laughs> Would I? I wouldn't feel okay. Me sitting down and huh? she trying to stand, girl. But it was nice huh? though. It was nice, but yeah. It, it, I meant that she, all she could see was I had no arm. Yeah. She couldn't see that I was younger. Or she couldn't see that I could stand up mm. with my two feet. And <laughs> you, you had like a so-called working arm, uh, you know, functioning. They couldn't see what was working. They could only see what wasn't. Okay, but do you, do, do you feel that sometimes, I'm going to be like the devil's advocate here, that sometimes it can be like you can't do right by people. You know, like these people, they probably thought that they were being kind and help and all of this stuff. And you, they don't know how many times you have been experiencing that. And they don't know like your state of mind, you know, how you will perceive that action. So I'm just thinking that, to be the devil's advocate is not always easy. Like if I'm going to give an example, when it comes to the LGBTQ plus community, it is a lot of new terms that keep coming all day, every day. Mm. You know, uh, this one is a he, she, this one is uh, it, mm. them. And it's a lot of pronouns and a lot of stuff that keeps coming up that yeah. is new do you understand and for somebody that is uh so-called not very educated on that mm. uh you would step on some toes yeah you know like it's inevitable you will step on some toes like even if you i guess you mean good like it's coming from a good place you know well talking about that mm. maybe it sounds bad 
well, I don't care. You know. Um, the um, they part mm. is pretty damn confusing. Mm. Sometimes I wonder why couldn't they use another word? Instead of they. I'm thinking, oh, there's three people coming. Mm. Then I see just one person. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I get super confused. We, but we, I get it after a while, but still. We, we, we oh. should have like another session when it comes to that. Because mm. literally, what I think, when they are saying they, you have some people that believe that there are multiple spirits in one body. You understand? So when they are walking around, yeah, but they are not even, walking as just But one, when they're talking, yeah. you know. Which spirit is talking then? You know, you know that it's that kind of day. But there's another <laughs> another type of kind of day with all senses. Not crazy. Not much multiple personality. She that person just wanna be there. Not, not Okay, you know what have a we mental disability. Okay. Just want but, to be called they. Okay, but this, like, I don't think that they even consider it a mental, mental disability sometimes. This is just... No, no, the people like, that have an actual mental disability. Uh, uh -huh, There's uh -huh. two types. The okay. ones that are okay yeah. and keep saying they. <laughs> yeah. And the ones that are not okay and keep saying they. my people. <laughs> But, you know, it's not mean. Just, just two. Bro, we, we, we need to. Okay. So next, next time we're going to have a <laughs> conversation about that. Maybe we will invite somebody that is uh, a little bit more, uh, how do you say, well-rounded in that subject. <laughs> so we don't step on any toes, right? Cause, I didn't say it was bad. I yeah. just saying there's two types. I get that. There's not one. Believe me, I do get you. Don't worry about that. I do get you. But, you know... <clears throat> We, we gotta be. So goddamn <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> huh? Okay. So uh, yeah, but we have been. Um, yeah, we have been talking about uh, how people around you know react and all of this stuff. And you said that most of the times, if you had any so-called discriminative, like somebody was mean or. Just being weird, it was often when you were young. So it was yeah. ignorant young kids. Uh, but as a grown-up, you haven't experienced that a lot. And this is because you have been avoiding... People. People, you know? And it's sad. Like, you shouldn't have to, you know? Because of... Like, I hope it's not because of that, you know? Um, but what did I want to say? Like, we were talking about... You and I have been talking about this a little bit. Um... And you said that with the biriru, you know, and I said, like, if you see people that are sitting in wheelchairs, like, that is a very visible disability. Mm -hmm. Like, most of the time, people will shrink down to their level and talk to them like they are some kind of kids. Uh, and this can be, like, a full-grown person. And they will talk to them like they are some kind of infant, you know. Mm -hmm. I think they have a word for it, but I can't remember. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were recently at the restaurant we spoke about it was some kind of instagram clip we saw where a father was sitting next to his toddler and the father was talking like normally and the kid was just yabba dabba doing back mm -hmm. and if you read the comments everybody was basically saying like this is the correct way you know because you learn the the that child is correct, yeah right? the child develops its vocabulary mm -hmm. you know instead of you do do da da the kid you know mm -hmm. So, we have some tips, okay? We have some tips uh, that we want to share. I mean, disabilities are like the rainbow. Like, it is... It's not one size fits all, basically. So, the tips that we guys are going to give you today, if you ask another person with another disability, or maybe even the same disability, they would be like, no, for me, I would hate if anybody did or said or acted like that so just have that in mind that this is our tips okay so do you want to try to tr translate this into because it is in swedish yeah? so number one um. and this is f mostly for people that are so-called allies or you know like abled people Right. Okay. Uh, one size doesn't fit all. Mm. 
Uh, second one is. Uh, oh, we just we take one at oh, a time. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, <laughs> we take one at a time. So what do we mean when we say one size doesn't fit all? Adaptability. Mm -hmm. You have to adapt to the situation, but it's good to have a foundation to adapt. And that kind of foundation is it like? Uh, information maybe yeah yeah it is information information is key yeah yeah so short and sweet what it, what we want what we are trying to say is that um maybe just because you read a book about uh, let's say adhd doesn't mean that you know everything about all disabilities that ever existed and that you can apply the same method, the same approach to everybody that you meet. Like you should adapt, like Dijon said, you should adapt, you know? Yeah, I know. But it's like, I have this French accent, you know? So I get the Celine Dion, <laughs> okay? We're gonna cut that maybe and do some So that was number one. Uh, one size doesn't fit all, basically just, Trying to get informed, you know? Try to get informed. <clears throat> to be uh, brave and uh, ask questions. Okay. Um, you know, to... Uh, I mean, you can be curious and it's just the way you are curious that is the thing. Mm -hmm. You can ask but be respectful while asking yeah okay so let's just try to give like a concrete example let's say uh we take different scenarios you are a stranger to me we never met before i'm sitting here at the park minding my business and let's say that uh, uh yeah let's say i'm missing an arm mm -hmm. okay your situation now and you like, okay, or different. You are you and mm -hmm. I am a stranger mm -hmm. and I approach you. What would be like the best, like what would you f feel comfortable with answering? Like how would you want to be approached? And how do you think like others in your situation may, you don't know 100%, but like, I guess that this would be. Maybe to know the reason why you want to know. To know Why? the reason. Because yeah. most of the time, mm. I just want to know. That's and that good. Piss, piss a person off. That's a good answer. No matter if you have a disability, no matter if you're able or disabled. Mm. Why the fuck do you want to know? Exactly. Yeah. Like that Want to comes... know don't mean want to know. Bruh. Why do you want to know? That is a good ass answer. Like, I will tell you why this is a good answer. Because this applies to everything in society. Like, I feel like now with social media and everything, everybody is in everybody's business a little bit too much, right? You know, just snooping and all of this. It's good. You need to ask yourself, why do I need to know this information about this person? Like, how am I going to benefit this person by knowing this? You know, mm -hmm. do I work in a store that uh, creates, uh, what do you call this? Amp um, um, prosthetic. Aesthetics, uh, arm prosthetics. prosthetics. Mm -hmm. Do I work in a boutique that sells or create prosthetics and I see somebody that is missing and I'm thinking, oh, okay, maybe that person doesn't know about my company. We can help them out. Mm -hmm. Always have like, what is your agenda? Mm -hmm. Very good. I think we can almost, yeah, that was a good answer. But it depends on which type of person. If it's a seven-year-old or eight-year-old, you want to really say, Oh, uh, I want to ask because that's mm. not normal. So I think you should go with another way to know why the kid wants to know. No, but I mean, like when it comes to kids, I'm going to be honest. Like they, they are like, it's okay. Do you understand? Like kids are so, most of the time they don't have like an ill attempt. Mm. You know, it's pure curiosity. Like they haven't ever seen it before. Mm. They have never heard of it before if they never been introduced to it in any shape or form you know but sometimes some are very aggressive some kids uh, yeah like they demand answers but these are entitled kids 
Yeah. These are kids that their parents need to go back to the drawing board and be like, you know what? We cannot go out here and act like we act at home, you know? Because mm. somebody will slap your little ass, you know? Or something. <laughs> I guess that's why. Yeah. Mm. Okay, no, but that that's good. So basically, number two then, that... Uh, be courageous you know ask but know why you're asking yeah okay and the last one um to um adapt your communication way of connecting uh based on a person yeah, yeah. so uh, i mean that makes sense you know like if you meet somebody that's like an 80 year old grandma that maybe doesn't hear so well you would talk a little bit louder than you usually do right or and when you that was an example i saw on an old er mm. how, how, do you know that program is it a series yeah a series uh, an old series before called er is it almost like uh what do you call it uh grace CC, Ata- uh grace and autonomy kind of yeah but the one before that oh that no mm. in the 90s damn anyway, okay i used to watch it yes in the 90s. <laughs> and uh, there was it was a mix of disability and racism Ooh. all in one. Oh, oh that's another topic and that was like they had a car accident, a white man, a black man mm-hmm. and a white woman had a car accident. The mm-hmm. woman was driving, so she got hurt worse. She was unconscious. But the police people that were white mm-hmm. policemen mm-hmm. could only interact with the black. But they didn't know mm-hmm. he wasn't talking because he has... He can't talk. He had a speech uh, different something. Yeah. Yeah. So, <clears throat> but it, it took a whole two hours. Hmm. And it even be- beat him. Oh. Because they, they weren't getting an answer from him. Oh, God. Until saw so, an, uh, a doctor who speaks, uh, who uh, can sign language, mm. saw that he was signing with the hand they were that were handcuffed to oh, that he was moving what his a hand. nightmare then they saw that he can't talk do you know what the saddest part is this little side note that you share right now like this is a series this is fictional but s- similar events have actually happened in real life like this is like a little clip I saw on Instagram. This was a, a guy that was autistic, yeah? mm-hmm. a black boy. He was a teenager, young teenager. Mm-hmm. And he, I think he ran away or something like that. And the police officers put him down on the ground. You know how American mm-hmm. police officers are. Mm-hmm. And people were outraged, you know, like he was so lucky that he had his so-called personal assistant to somebody there next to him Mm. that could you know and you could hear because he was recording everything he's autistic he doesn't know you know like he can't talk like that you Mm. know like oh i was like what a nightmare scenario imagine if this guy was walking out going for a evening stroll yeah and this happened and nobody was there to confirm that no 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 he has a disability so you're right. When it comes to imagine like being disabled and racism at the same time, that is a double punishment. And trans, transgendered oh. man, uh, pregnant transgender man, and racism. Oh. I have an example. Mm. Uh, pre- uh, quite a heavily pregnant trans man mm. was going for a stroll mm. to the shop. And there was a racist shop owner mm. thought that he was stealing because he yeah. didn't understand her, his belly was a baby bump. So they thought that it was just items. Yeah. So. Hmm. But uh, so they, um, they called the police mm. and he had to say that he was pregnant. Wow. And uh, one of the police, a woman, drew up 
to see <laughs> to make sure that there was, was a baby uh, up in there mm. before they let him go. So this is, do you remember the question, the hypothetical question that I was asking you? You know, when I say, would you have a, a disability that is visible or uh, non-visible? So I'm not saying that transgender, that's a whole nother topic. Mm -hmm. We're going to have it another session maybe. Mm -hmm. But I'm not saying that that's a disability. I don't know if it counts under disability. No, but, I'm, but I'm just saying that in these cases, none of these people that we are talking about mm -hmm. goes under the umbrella, you know, for so-called normal or typical, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And look at all of the fuck shit that they go through because of that. Mm -hmm. So this is the reason why I said <clears throat> when we had this conversation that I, if I had to choose like a disability, I think I, just, hypothetically then, I said I would take something that was more so-called invincible. Yeah. You know, because, you know, people are very, like, the first sight, they will judge mm. based on your skin color, based on your gender, based on your length, you know, based on what they can see and touch, basically, you know? Yeah. But and, the thing... Oh, no, no, go. The thing also with invisible disability, shit can hit the fan real quick because they don't see it. That's the thing, you know, you it's... could die. I'm telling you, this is the thing. So in my case, like I would say is a invincible disability, yeah. this ADHD mm. thing, you know, like if I'm sitting there, like I can't, this has happened to me so many times. I meet new people yeah. and they talk to me a certain way. And as soon as they start to see, like for some people, it takes a couple of hours. Mm. For other people, it takes weeks, months, mm. but they start to notice like it's something different with you, mm. you know, and you see all of a sudden how they change. Now they talk to you like you are some kind of, uh, like you're an idiot, mm. basically. You know, so I get what you mean, but I think, like I said, like, well, if the... another one in Sweden. Which one? Um, I think, I don't know, but he had a disability, but he was waving a knife in his home and they shot him to death. Oh, ah, oh, uh, he had Down syndrome yeah, or something, something like that. Like... And I'm like, man, that's a visible disability. Like, you don't need to be a doctor or anything. Like, you, that's one of the, like, you see. Mm from miles away yeah, and they shot shit. him dead mm -hmm. i'm telling you it is not easy it is not easy so we can sit here and we can give you all kinds of tips and all of this stuff what you guys think about this think about that but most of it like comes down to common sense right most of it comes... if you are missing common sense, what the hell do you do then? Bruh, then I don't know. <laughs> then I don't know. <laughs> you just have to pray to higher powers to give you some kind of something, you know? Or try to learn common yeah. sense. Because it's never too late. Like, yeah, even an old dog can sit, you know? So, you know, just be open for new information, for new ways of thinking, and not so closed off, you know? Yeah, like... You know, or maybe it's off topic, but uh, I had someone, like a relative, who um, keeps, no, no kind of distant relative, that keeps referring to me as darling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he don't understand how it's belittling, and plus he's mm -hmm. younger. Way, way younger than me. Do you know what the... I saw an old man in my head. Yeah. When you explained I it. I know. I saw this right? old uncle, you know. S so I told him. Yeah. Like, he... That just stop saying that. When you, like, because we were talking about something. I said, listen, darling. And he, he still don't understand the tone in that fucking listen, darling, mm -hmm. he had going on there. He couldn't understand what I was talking about. Mm. He even brought on, gave me a definition of dear to kind of point out that she, he didn't mean in a bad way. But that's not the point. That's just not the point. Darling. Hmm. 
I'm not. But this was a relative, you said, right? Yeah. And but way, this, way younger than Way me. younger than you. I, like, okay. It's a little well, bit minimizing if you say it the wrong way, you know? Yeah. It can feel like a sweet, sweetheart. Yeah, you know? that part. Like, I get what you mean. But it's the yeah. thing is, sometimes you're just saying, stop saying it. And, and still, that person don't understand. It should be enough with stop saying it. And you don't continue. have to go find the definition to point out that what I, I said wasn't wrong. Hmm. Sometimes, yeah. You can agree on disagree. Like uh, you said, okay, I don't want to be called your darling. Mm. And this person could have, okay, let me plead my case and explain that I don't mean it in a bit, bit light, uh, I don't mean it in a bad way. Mm. But then you gotta respect, like, okay, that person don't want to be called that, mm. and, you know. But now I put my two cents, mm. you know, yeah. and I explain that. Yeah. Yeah. Just off topic. Continue what we're saying. <laughs> Let me just see how far we have gone. Ooh, one hour already. Do you see how easy it is to just? Mm. Do you understand? Maybe you can cut it up into little pieces. We'll see. But I mean, like some, I have listened to some podcasts and I will be honest, like some of these podcasts, they can be up to three hours. Yeah. Do you understand? Mm. So when it comes to podcasting. But I can't, I can't even focus for and one listen. hour. Do you so understand? This why is, not put it into little parts? This is what I keep saying. That's why they have their commercials and all of this. Yeah. Mm. But we just end it here. Mm. And if we have anything else to add we would just do like a, and I will put it in somehow mm -hmm. but thank you for share, sharing your story um, and giving all of these tips and you know just you know thank you for being you basically and we'll see how this goes maybe we have like a part two or something in the future we'll see Everything depends on how stuff goes, basically. And if I mistakenly offended someone, sorry. Oh, you see, this is, uh, that's a whole nother topic. This is today's society. Like, you, we are basically sitting here sharing our own, uh, what do you call it, uh, experiences. Mm -hmm. And even by sharing your own experience, that can still be like somebody somewhere can be offended isn't it weird yeah. isn't it weird something as personal as your own story something you went through and somebody's gonna be like no i don't think that's correct mm -hmm. and it's like but this is my reality this is what i heard this is what people told me this is what i do you understand oh gosh well no. i said it so Okay, so yeah. you you get an uh, uh, advanced apology here. Yeah. If anybody get offended out there, but uh, keep in mind that nobody's hold, holding you a hostage. Okay, so being here, being on social media, watching, listening to people is free choice. So if you have a sensitive heart or just feel some type of way, just log off. It's very simple. Okay. But everybody have a nice day and remember to be kind. Yeah, bye. Bye.